In this video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of going over some type of in-depth topic, I'm going to give you one tip that's going to help you to effortlessly move the needle a little bit on your fat loss goals. You can implement this today and it's going to help your diet suck just a little bit less. But first, I'm going to head over to my parents' house. I have a package waiting over there and you're going to want to see it. So let's head over. You want to go for a ride? Yeah, you're in this week's video right now because I'm recording the video. <laughs> I'll call you back. See you, man. So what we have here is a fun little surprise. This came a little bit earlier than I was expecting. I have a couple shirts for some other things, but the white shirts are what we're looking at here. I got some fancy new designs or a new design coming that's going to be printed white tank top and white t-shirt so if you want to see the designs and what's going to be printed on these bad boys right here then go ahead and smash that subscribe button and you'll learn more about these either next week or the week after now let's get to the video what's up guys ryan here tradeawaytraining.com where we help busy professionals get more results in less time through online training. Now we all know dieting isn't necessarily fun. Sure, getting the results is fun, seeing the muscle definition come in, fitting in your clothes better, feeling better, all of that stuff is fun, but the actual process of dieting isn't fun. And one thing that you can do to make your diet suck less and be just a little bit more enjoyable and get you a little bit better results in the process is going to be to increase the amount of fibrous foods you're eating. It's gonna provide you with two benefits. One, it's gonna help you to get full faster, which is gonna help you to stick to the calorie target. So if you're hitting your calorie target and then you're still hungry after that, then the likelihood of you actually staying within that calorie target and not just continuing to eat food after that, the, the, the odds are go down pretty drastically. So we want to be full on the diet so that we actually stick to the diet. So when you eat these fibrous foods, you're gonna get full faster, you're gonna stay full longer, which is gonna make it easier to stick to whatever that calorie number is for you. Another benefit is foods that are high in fiber tend to also be lower in calories. So it's a double whammy on the fullness. So not only are you gonna be eating foods that help you to get full, you're gonna be able to eat more of those foods as well. So you're not gonna have a problem sticking to the diet if you are including lots of these fibrous foods because you're gonna be eating a lot of food for the same number of calories. The recommended amount of fiber for men is 38 grams per day and the recommended amount for women is 25 grams per day. And there's really no upper limit as long as it's not causing you stomach discomfort. So really, the upper limit is going to be highly individual. For some people, it's going to be right at that minimum number is actually going to be getting to the point where you're getting uncomfortably full and having you know GI distress because of fiber intake. And then for others like myself, I've really not had an amount of fiber that's actually hurt my stomach before. There's been a couple of times uh, during my last bodybuilding cut where I had over 100 grams of fiber in one day and it didn't really cause me any discomfort. So it's gonna be highly individual as far as the upper limit for fiber, but that's just something that you'll figure out over time. Really just the more is probably gonna be better when you're sticking to that calorie target just because it's gonna be allowing you to eat more food. And plus, out of the three years that I've been coaching people, I've never had a single person that's consumed too much fiber. Usually I'm having to help people pick specific foods to get them up to that minimum target and not the other way around. And studies actually support this as well. The vast majority of people only eat about half of what the recommended target is for fiber each day. And I'm actually curious if you guys get enough fiber each day. So let me know down in the comments 
if that's something that's not necessarily a problem for you or if it's something that you need to work on a little bit more. Now let's talk about some specific foods to help you boost that fiber intake. And right at the very, very top of the list, we have blackberries. For every 100 calories of blackberries that you consume, you're gonna be getting 13 grams of fiber. So if you eat 200 calories worth of blackberries, then you're already gonna exceed that 25 gram of fiber mark. And right behind that, we have raspberries, which are just barely under that. They're at 12.3 grams of fiber per 100 calories. And other berries are gonna have fiber as well, just not as much as raspberries and blackberries. And from there, we kind of drop off. We have Brussels sprouts and broccoli, and really any green vegetable is gonna fall into this category. They're all gonna be pretty high in fiber. And then from there, we actually have chia seeds. The one thing that you will uh, note here is the serving size for chia seeds is gonna be pretty small since they have a lot of fat in them, and it's gonna have a lot of calories in them, but they're just really densely packed with fiber. And then under that, we have lentils, carrots, black beans, and really any beans, so black beans, navy beans, pinto beans, you know, any of those. And then we drop down, we have green peas, and then we have kiwis, apples, and then a lot of your other fruits are gonna fit in right here. So bananas, things like that are all gonna fit kind of, you know, towards the bottom of this chart here. They have a decent amount of fiber, just not a ton. So I mean, they are pretty filling still though. And then right there at the very bottom of the list, I went ahead and included popcorn. And just because that's one thing that you probably wouldn't necessarily think about is popcorn, it actually has a decent amount of fiber. So for every 100 calories of popcorn you eat, you're actually gonna be getting 3.5 grams of fiber, which you know a lot of people kind of forget about popcorn as being a healthy snack, but if you're eating air pop popcorn, that's actually a pretty pretty good option there and you're getting some fiber in there it's something that takes a long time to eat which is another thing if it's something that you can eat really fast and you're done then that's another thing to take into consideration as far as fullness on a diet so popcorn is gonna be something that takes a long time to eat has a decent amount of fiber in there and plus popcorn is just pretty tasty you add a little bit of salt maybe a little bit of spray butter don't want to go too heavy because of the calories but boom, you have a pretty nice, pretty tasty, pretty healthy snack there. And then one other fiber option that I did not include in the list, but it is something to consider, is there are breads that are fortified with extra fiber. So if you just really don't like any of the foods that I've already said and you're having trouble getting that fiber intake up, then check into some high fiber breads. And one final thing that I do wanna mention before we end this video, because we are talking about fiber, and fiber is a type of carb, if you're tracking your carbs, if you're tracking your macronutrients, so your proteins, your carbs, your fats, then you need to be tracking total carbs, not just net carbs. Net carbs isn't really a thing. And net carbs is just something that some marketer came up with at some point and did a really good job of because it stuck around just to sell a product. So what most people refer to net carbs as is your total carbs minus your fiber, minus your sugar alcohols. When the problem with that is there are different types of fiber and some types of fiber actually do contain calories, whereas some don't, which is where the net carbs thing comes from. So really if you're counting your net carbs and you're going very, very, very high on your fiber in order to be able to eat more carbs, you're actually gonna be consuming more calories then you're accounting for, which is going to hurt your fat loss. So make sure you're tracking total carbs. And that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Don't forget, if you want to check out that t-shirt design, make sure to subscribe. I'll be back next week to show you that new design. And if you want more content just like this, then you can check out the Treadaway Training Blogcast. We are there every Sunday at 3 p.m. That is treadawaytraining.com slash blog. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you Sunday.